So I'm making some 3D pixel art and I've got a scene set up here and I'll just render that out in low resolution. And it looks not great. There's a lot of sort of pixel creep, this temporal aliasing going on. Could work for some games, but I'm trying to make it look as 2D as possible. If I snap the camera to the texel grid, then this problem goes away. The image is perfectly stable in motion. There's no more pixel creep. But it's not really it's not really smooth camera movement. If I shift the final image around in screen space, this creates uh, a wonderfully smooth result with no more temporal artifacts. But we can go smoother with a uh, sub-pixel movement and a fancy shader. Let's take a look. So here's the scene, it's just a cube, plane, and an orthogonal camera. So to snap the camera to the texel grid, I need to find out the size of a texel. And I know the, the height of the viewport here in meters. Call that H, and I know that's 10 meters, because the orthogonal camera size is 10 meters, and it's set to keep height. I also know the viewport height in texels, because I have a resolution of 320 by 180 texels. So the texels per meter, I'll call S, is Y over H, which equals 180 on 10, which is 18. 18 texels per meter. Imagine you have one meter here, that's one meter, there will be 18 texture elements in there. The size of an individual texel is just one over s, so that's one eighteenth of a meter. So now we know the size of our texel grid, and we need a position to snap to, and we'll use the camera position. So p sub 1 is going to be the camera position. P sub 2 is going to be our snapped camera position. We'll use a simple snapping function, which will be P1 multiplied by S. Then we round this, so we add half and floor it. And then we divide the whole thing by S. Then we can find the snap delta, or snap error. We'll call that R, and that's simply P2 minus P1. We use this value to affect the horizontal and vertical offset of the camera because we don't want to mess with the actual camera transform. Let's look at the code. So here in the code we have the process function. Uh, this is S. It's actually 1 over S. Uh, this is our P1 and here we're calculating P2, the snapped position using the vector 3 snapped function and the texel size. Uh, then we calculate R and apply that as the horizontal and vertical offsets. I'll also just explain snap space. Snap space defines uh, an origin and an XY plane on which the camera is going to snap to. It's like view space, but it only updates when the rotation changes. Because when the rotation changes, the XY plane needs to stay tangential to the view. Following all of that, you should have something that looks like trash unless you enable snapping. And then it's snapped. But it's not smooth, so let's let's smooth this result out. This setup is similar, except I render the camera to a sub viewport and then display it on a sprite 2D so that I can shift it around in screen space. The viewport smoothing works by taking the delta of the camera snapping, so the snap error, and then we have the entire final viewport image, and we shift it back in the opposite direction by how much the camera was snapped. Artificial has a, has a great video explaining the viewport smoothing technique, so I won't really go into too much detail in that. Link in the description. I can show you the effect of the pixel movement if I disable clipping on the control node and then just increase the width. 
we can see this image is moving around in reaction to the snapping that would be happening. So if I disable pixel movement, it's uh, snapping and then enable pixel movement and we're shifting the final image around. I also have sub pixel movement using a technique by Tessellator. Link in the description to his excellent video explaining how he created this pixel art upscaling anti-aliasing shader. Finally, you might want to snap an object to the grid, because if I'm moving this cube around, we can see that everything else is smooth and stable while this cube experiences that temporal aliasing. So we can also snap that to the same texel grid as the camera. So I put this cube into the snap group here, and then in the, in the camera script, at the end of the frame, I just loop through that group and use the, the, the same snap function to snap that position. But we also want to revert the position after we've drawn it. So in the ready function, I connect the frame post draw signal to the snap objects revert function, which just reverts them to their pre-snap positions and clears out the array. And that results in a nice snapped cube moving around. I'll link the source code repo in the description. Next video will be about pixel perfect outlines. Subscribe. Bye.